We recently saw how you could design an abstract function based on the list of X template and how that abstract function ended up being foldr. In this video we're going to look at a more complicated example where we've got multiple templates associated with types involving mutual recursion. We'll design an abstract function for those multiple templates and look at some of the things we can do with it. And when we're done we'll talk about a question that some of you who may have already known how to program before you took this course have probably asked yourself, which is why didn't we start learning loops in the first place? Okay, here we go. What I have here is the folder starter file. And this starter file is actually based on the week 8 arbitrary arity tree lecture notes. You might remember that was the lecture in which we did the photo organizer program. And we ended up with this set of data definitions. There was a directory and each directory had in it a name for the directory, a list of subdirectories, and a list of images. Where the list of subdirectories was an ordinary list of data definition, each element of the list was itself a directory. And so what we ended up with in this example was some mutual recursion here back and forth between list of directory and directory, there's a mutual reference right there. And of course there's also some regular reference here from list of image down to list of image and some self-reference. But there was that mutual reference cycle. And we saw whenever we have mutual reference like that, that what we decide to do is to group all the type comments together the way we've done here. Then group all the examples and group all the templates. And here's the templates that we ended up with. There were three, one for dir, one for list of dir, and one for list of image. And there was the same kind of mutual reference between them. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do just what we recently did with the list of x template when we designed the abstract function foldr. I'm going to take these three template functions and try to design an abstract function from them. So let me first start by making a copy of them. So here I'm just making a copy. I'm going to get rid of these comments. And now I'll encapsulate them with local inside of a single abstract function. I'm going to call that abstract function. Since the one for the list of, uh, the list of uh, x template ended up being called foldr, I'm just going to call this one foldr because it's going to operate on a directory. And we know it's going to take a bunch of arguments for all of these dots, but it's certainly going to take a directory argument because it operates on a directory. So let's put that in first, and we'll come back and put some other arguments in here later. And we'll use a local, and the local is just going to encapsulate all three of these template functions. And then there'll be a trampoline, and the only thing the trampoline has to do is call the fun for dir. Template function like that. I'll use Command I or its Control I on Windows to fix my indentation. And there we go. Now I've got at least a start of this abstract function. I'm going to run it now. Nothing's going to happen, of course, but at least I'll know if my parentheses are balanced. And they are because I didn't get any errors about that. Okay, so now I've got the skeleton of this abstract function, but I still have all these dots there, there there, there, and there. Well, let's see, this dot here, and here, and here, those are all functions that appear in combination position. So let me just make up some names from those. I'm just going to call them combination 1, combination 2, and combination 3. And I'll just stick them in there. Combination 1, combination 2, and combination you could call them fun1, fun2, and fun3 if you want. Those would be perfectly fine names. And the other sets of dots are just values in base position. So I'm just going to call those base1 and base2. B1, B2. Once again, I'll fix my indentation. And I'll save and run just to make sure I didn't mess up the parentheses, and I didn't. 
So now I've got this abstract function which should work. It's based on the templates I've filled in for each set of dots. I've given a parameter for that. So I ought to be able to do something with this. Before trying to get it to do something, let me actually produce a signature for it. And here you're going to see a slightly different way of producing a signature for an abstract function. Here we're going to try to read the signature directly off the code. We're not going to use examples to produce the signature. We're going to produce the signature directly from the code. And that's an effective way to do it when you're designing abstract functions based on templates. So here we go. We've got to put something here. Well, let's see. There's three inner functions in this abstract function. Let's think for a second about what their signatures are going to be. Fun for dir, we know it consumes a dir. And what does it produce? Well, we don't know. So let's just decide for now that it produces x. Now let's look at fun for LOD. Well, that consumes list of dir. And what does it produce? Well, again, we don't know. It depends on how this abstract function gets used by a specific concrete function. So let's just say it produces y. And then there's fun for LOI. Well, that consumes list of image. And we'll just say that it produces z. So now, do we know anything more up here? Well, we do. If fun for dir produces x, then the trampoline of the abstract function fold dir itself is just a call to fun for dir. So if fun for dir produces x, then the whole folder produces x. So this thing is now producing x. And we already knew, we didn't write this down before, but we already knew that the last argument was going to be a directory. So we're starting to make some progress. We still need the type of C1, C2, C3, B1, and B2. Well, let's see if we can make some progress on that. Well, let's look at C1 first. C1 takes three arguments. So its signature is going to look something like a type, a type, a type, an arrow, and a type. Let's see, C1 produces the result of fun for dir. And fun for dir produces x. So the result type of C1 is x. What do we know about the arguments to C1, the types of the arguments to C1? Well, let's see, the first argument to C1 is the result of dir name. And if we go back up here to the type comments, we see that the name of a directory is a string. So the type of the result of dir name is string. So the type of the first parameter to C1 is string. Let's see. The second parameter to C1, the second argument to C1 is the result of a call to fun for LOD. And fun for LOD produces Y, so the type of the second argument is Y. And the third argument to C1 is the result of calling fun for LOI. Fun for LOI produces Z, so the type of the third argument to C1 is a Z. And that was pretty good. Let's try that again. Let's do C2. Well, C2 consumes two arguments, so it's some type, some type, produces some type. Now what do we know about the type that C2 produces? Well, C2 can produce a result for fun for LOD. So the type of C2 better be whatever the result type of fun for LOD is, and that's a Y. So we'll say that C2 produces a Y. Now let's look at the first argument to C2. Well, the first argument to C2 is the result of fun for dir. The type of the result of fun for dir is x, so the type of the first argument to C2 is x. The second argument to C2 is the result of a call to fun for LOD. 
the type of the result of fun for LOD is Y. So the type of the second argument to C2 is Y. What I'm going to do is encourage you to stop the tape here and for yourself, just the way I've been doing, work out the type for C3, that'll be a function type of some sort, and work out the type for B1 and B2. So fill in this space here with the type for C3 and the type for B1 and B2. Go ahead and, and stop the video and do that yourself, and then we'll start the video again and I'll show you my answer. Okay, great. I hope you were able to determine the types for C3 and B1 and B2. Let me work through it now, and you can check your work against what I'm going to do. Let's see, C3 we know is a function, and it's a function of two arguments. So its type is going to be something like some type, some type produces some type. Well, let's see, what's the type of the first argument to C3? The type of the first argument to C3 is first of LOI. And let's go remind ourselves what LOI is. Oh, it's a list of image. So first of list of image is an image. So here we go. The type of the first argument to C3 is image. Wow, a concrete type. We haven't seen that in a while. Now let's look at the type of the second argument to C3. Well, it's the second argument to C3 is the result of a call to fun for LOI, and fun for LOI produces a Z. So the type of the second argument to C3 is a Z. And C3 can be a result of fun for LOI, so it has to produce a Z. So that's a Z there. Okay, now we just have B1 and B2 left. Well, let's see. B1 can be a result of fun for LOD. So whatever the type of the result of fun for LOD is, B1 has to have that type. And the type of the result of fun for LOD is Y, so the type of B1 has to be a Y. And similarly for B2, it can be a result of fun for LOI, so it has to have type Z. So there we go, that's quite a signature. For the purpose, I'm just going to say that this is fold for dir. We'll talk more about that later. So that's quite a signature. The way I produced it was just reasoning through here, picking up whatever concrete types I could, giving type parameters to the types I didn't have concrete types for, and just keeping things consistent so that I use the type parameters in the repeated places where they need to be. When you've got an abstract function like this made from a template, one way to kind of start experimenting with it is to get it to just copy a value. What I mean by that is suppose we got check expect, and we're going to use folder, which of course is the abstract function for a fold on lists, and I want to give folder some parameters, a first argument and a second argument, to take a list like one, two, three, and just produce a list with the exact same elements in it. So it makes another list with the same elements. Well, how do I do that with Foldr? This is the base value for Foldr. And if I'm making another list just like the list I'm given, and the list I'm given is empty, then the base value for that is empty. And this is the position for fold R that combines, this is the combination position, it combines a single element of this list with the natural recursion. So I just want cons there. And if I run that, this other code doesn't run because there's no use for it yet, but the test pass. This use of fold R with cons and empty is just building another list exactly like this one. So let's try to get folder to do something like that for us. 
we'll say folder and let's see folder takes five arguments plus a directory one two three four five arguments plus a directory and if I go up here I've got some nice directories DMP in particular is a nice big directory with lots of stuff in it and I'll just go ahead and use that one okay so I'll go back down here DMP is a nice big directory and what I want to get back is a directory that's the same as that directory it has all the same stuff in it same name same subdirectories same everything so now the question is what are all these other parameters I have to give to folder well let's start with the simplest case let's start with copying just the list of images well copying a list of images is just like the copy that we just did with foldr the base case b2 has to be empty and the combination position c3 has to be cons think about it if I just put an empty there and a cons there and call that function with a list of images I'll get back a list of the same images let's do fun for LOD now well it's really the same thing I've got a list of directories and I want to get back a copy of the recursive call fun for dir on the directories so again b1 is going to be empty and c2 is going to be cons so all we have left is c1 well let's think about what c1 needs to do when we call this abstract function with all these arguments and we get to c1 well dir name will be the name of the directory and the result of fun for LOD will be the result of copying the list of directories. And the result of fun for LOI will be the result of copying the list of images. And so now I've got a directory name, a list of subdirectories, and a list of images, and I want a directory made out of them. What should C1 be? Well, C1 is just the constructor. Just like cons is just the constructor. Let's try that. great that's succeeding in copying this directory for us what I'd like to ask you to do now is review this video a bit to be sure you're comfortable with the way this call to folder that passes all these arguments essentially just fills in all these positions and that putting make dir there empty there cons there empty there cons there is basically just copying the directory structure for us because basically what the abstract function is doing is it's going all the way down through the directory and its subdirectories in the way that the fold r abstract function went all the way down to the end of the list this is doing something more elaborate because of the mutual recursion but it's basically playing the same role so go ahead and review this and when you're comfortable with it watch part two of this video and we'll do some more fun stuff with this